said, I want you to know that God is honored and Jesus smiles upon his children when they gather together faithfully in his name. I believe that. I believe that God the Father is honored and that Jesus smiles wide when his people gather together in one accord to lift up the mighty name of our God. I pray that it is happening all over the world even yet today. That we can see God's people gathering faithfully in his name. Hallelujah. Today is our third Sunday. Traditionally for our third Sundays we want to remember our missionaries that are scattered around the world that we support, that you all support so faithfully. Today we're just going to pull up a few pictures and we're going to remind ourselves of their faces. And so if you're curious and wondering about the policies for us, you hear about what's going on, if you feel comfortable and safe, then you do not have to be masked here anymore. Okay? If you feel like that is still best for you, then that's okay too. Okay? So these faces we're going to see in just a moment after I grab my clicker. <laughs> there we go. Because we surely, surely do not want to forget these dear ones who are out there on the front lines ministering the gospel of Jesus Christ, boldly going where many of us have never gone before, other than in prayer and support. And Lakeside, you are amazing in that, you know, I shared with you a while back that I'm going to scroll through really fast here, that we were considering this family, and we're going to officially consider that today at our elders meeting, but people have already increased the giving so that miraculously this church is able to send $100 a month to here, to there, to there, and to there, that's amazing. That's amazing. And so we're going to take a moment to pray for, have a couple notes here from these different ministries that I'd like to share with you. So the Browns in Mexico, if you have not yet met them, they hope that in 2021 or later in early 2022, they'll get to come again. It's been two years. Uh, BC was the last time they were here. <laughs> so not before Christ, before COVID. So we understand they came the summer before COVID and we got to share and they got to share with us. We had a huge gathering. We connected with our church across the lake and had a really good turnout, a time to bless them. And they are forever blessed because we're here believing and supporting their ministry. So we want to remember to pray for them. So we're going to do that now. Remember on uh, third Sunday. When we have Evangelism Sunday, all monies that go into the silver plate, our heart fund that goes around the world, we just fill that up and we'll continue to support that ministry. Ties and offerings are forever in the basket here. Uh, different ministries online. However you choose to give, you are doing so faithfully. So thank God for that, that the ministries continue and we are able to be a part of this. So could I get someone to volunteer to pray for Dell and Joy Brown there in Mexico? So you don't have to listen to only me for the next 50 minutes. Okay. Thank you. So Heavenly Father, we pray for Del and Joy Brown, that your favor would be upon them as we are sure that it is. That um, God will prepare hearts that are firm on the ground and that they will continue to uh, minister within prisons and orphanages and, and just out on the streets, whatever. God, whatever door you open for them, may they uh, walk through that door. And we pray for many people to not only get saved, but also to be mentored and discipled so that they can carry on the work of the ministry. And God, even though Del and Joy Brown are relatively young, I pray that they will be looking forward to uh, training up the next generation to carry on the ministry just as they have taken now that mantle of leadership, God, there over that ministry, may they start thinking ahead and preparing those who will also then carry that on. And we pray for many people. Uh, God, uh, as there's a lot of people coming our way in the United States from that area, I pray that there would be people that are saved that will evangelize here as well. Mm -hmm. So, God, may they not only be just within Mexico, but may the people that are getting saved and discipled to be uh, ministers and witnesses throughout the world. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Okay.
area of Vanilla Creek now have uh, relocated to Southern California. They are still a part of Eagle. They are still the leaders of Eagle Drift Ministries. They do a lot of outreaches into Mexico through our support as well. Uh, mostly what we've been focusing on this last year is the work that they're doing in Kenya with uh, Anthony and Badina. And so, Jane, did you have a little bit of report from them, contact with um, Badina and how things are going there? Last, um, last email said that um, their students are all placed well enough to get into schools, and some have been in the <coughs> highest school, which opens the door for uh, going into high schools that eventually lead into like government or leadership positions. So they were really pleased that all of their kids made it, um, and they said that God provided in a miraculous way, and they were able to meet their teacher's salary. Uh, and they're hoping, they're going now on to break, for their break is, and they're hoping that the teachers will uh, agree to come back for the next time. Amen, amen. So would you pray for that? and for that ministry there. You all remember we took up a special offering. We were able to send about $700 to that ministry to keep their school functioning. And remember, Badina and her husband, uh, Anthony, opened up their home to 30 children that would have otherwise been homeless. And so they brought them in, and you all were able to help support that and keep that ministry happening. So, Jane, you want to pray? The teachers will come back. Teacher, pray for the teachers. How about that? Heavenly Father, we just come before you. And Father, we're thinking of your hand there and how you're looking in so many children's lives. And Father, you have a plan for that area. You're looking to the future and you are raising up mighty warriors for you there. And Father, I just thank you that uh, Anthony and Benita have found favor with the government there and with people who have been willing to help support them. Um, Father, it's, a, it's an area that calls itself a slum. And Father, I just pray that their influence there will cause the whole atmosphere to change there. And that uh, your word will just go forth to many people and that your blessing will be on that area and that it will change, Father, and that it will change into something that sees what happens when you put your face in the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I ask for your continued blessing on Anthony and Medina and all the, all the people that are the workers there, that you'll keep them strong, that you'll keep them healthy. Thank you, Father. In Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. John and Yvonne Lutz. I received an email from them. I'm going to read it to you. It's pretty exciting. You know, uh, John's a pretty exciting kind of guy. Here's what he writes. He's, first of all, he says... Incredible news, we are going to have a baby. Yeah. And so when I read this, like, what? Mm -hmm. Imagine when Abraham told Sarah and God, or told Sarah that what God had promised. Abraham laughed at first, then he told her. Now the reality check. He considered his 100-year-old body, no, he considered Sarah's 90-year-old body, barren body, no, but he didn't stop considering so he says, Yvonne and I are 61, yet God has gifted and called us to do impossible work. When I consider my body, here's what I see. I feel a dimming eyesight, dumbing mind, hearing aids, artificial knees, hernia repairs. When I consider Yvonne, looking great, but also signs of physical waning, but we haven't stopped considering the things of God. I love Abraham because after his physical reality check, he took a spirituality check, and here's what he realized. Faith grows as it focuses on God, and that God is able to do what he's promised he will do, and God promises rest in his grace. Our faith depends on his grace and ability, not ours. Now let me clarify, they are not having a baby physically, but they have been praying and praying and believing that God had birth in them, was growing within them, this baby, this ministry of actually going and physically being in the region to minister to the people of Akari, yes? So their baby is about to be birthed. Now let me share. Here's how he was talking to me on the phone, and you can 
hear his excitement when he said he was going to have a baby. I said, wait a minute, John. Aren't you a few years older than I am? So here's how he words this. It depends on your faith or on faith in order for that promise to be fulfilled, as it tells us in Romans chapter 4. It says he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. John has been camped there. Yovan and he have been camped there for over two years now. When they first visited, they knew that God said, you will go. And so they've been praying. So we're going to pray for them. And God has promised, he calls her Yovi, so cute, but Yovi. Yovan, he says, God has promised Yovan and I, children of faith, as we live, as we leave now our children for Jesus' sake. This summer, he wants us to go to Georgia. Georgia is how they say it. To bear fruit for Jesus in Hakari, Turkey. What? John, are you really dimming? God speaks to him. He says, no, I have a purpose. So he says, we are leaving on June 8th. And Georgia with plans to return August 13th for their 38th anniversary. And our beloved Israel, their son Israel, will be returning from Japan in this world, So they will be together here during that time. He asks that we continue to pray as things are coming together. They have now connected them with peoples there in Georgia. I had to text me back and say, because it looks like Georgia when you read it, but it's Georgia. And I said, Georgia? What are you doing in Georgia? No, Pastor, it's Georgia. It's in the Turkey region. It's south of Turkey, outside of Iran, where he can go. And now they're working with families and ministries and peoples. God took him. When he went, it just boggles my mind, guys. Imagine going to a foreign country like that, not really knowing who you're supposed to be with and who you're supposed to meet. He just prayed and fasted, God, if we're supposed to be here, you're going to have to bring them to me. Because I don't even know who they are. And God set up divine appointment after divine appointment after divine appointment to now they have networked with pastors, pastors in that area that have Hakari heritage, that are wanting and been looking for someone with a fire and a passion like his and resources to bring from other places to do the work. And it's happening. So they are about to give birth. They'll be there on June 8th to begin. So praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. We get to be a part of that. So God, I thank you for this couple. I thank you for their heart, that they remain faithful, steadfast, even when it seemed impossible they heard your voice and they stayed faithful to you, God. Even when they considered the impossible, you have done the possible. God, you're incredible. You're incredible, God. We thank you for what you're doing. Thank you that we get to be, God. We are honored that we get to be a part of what you're doing in that region. Lord, there's a lot happening in that part of the world right now that is just mind-boggling and unbelievable to even imagine. And God, you are working. You are working. So we pray for John and Yvonne. We pray for that region. God, we pray that you'll go before them now as they get ready to leave here in just a few weeks. Go before them. Provide everything that's needed financially. Medically work it out for the flights and there and back. Keep them healthy and strong and well. And Lord, we look forward. We anticipate the word, the good word, the praise reports of the many who will come to know you. Through the work of Lakeside and through the work of this couple and others, God, that are networking together to reach encouraged people whom once thought would be forever lost. God, nothing is impossible with you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Exciting times. Exciting times that we live in. This family right here, I have another photo of them here, and this card will be on our table. In this little room now, there's a table with picture cards of the different ministries that we support and pray for. So take time to look at the cards and pray. I'll get this picture up here for you later. It's a newer, newer picture of this family, but I'll read to you from this family a note they sent to us. Dear Lakeside Open Bible and Pastor Mike, thank you. Thank you for taking the time to view our video. Some of you may remember the little video clip we showed of them a, a month or two ago, and we we'll introduce that again. But he says, thank you for taking the time to view our video about Liber uh, Liberia and the work we are doing there. We wish we could have visited you all in person, but we know that with the challenging times, we must adjust accordingly. So thank you. Thank you for your willingness to adjust right along with us. Liberia holds a very special place in our hearts on so many levels. One of the biggest is the family heritage we hold there. 
Drew's grandparents, Bob and Evelyn Welch, were missionaries there for 27 years. As we carry on the blessing of ministry, we want to thank you for connecting with us in the kingdom. We cherish the fact that God is increasing our network of believers who are holding our family up in prayer and supporting us in ministry to Liberia. You are just too kind and it is so appreciated. We would love to answer any questions you may have or give you any further information with regards to the work we are doing in Liberia. You will find contact information on the back of the enclosed postcard to connect with us. Thank you again so much for your love and support. Many blessings to the Welch family. Let's just pray for them and what's happening in that part of the world right now. Uh, dear God, we thank you for this family. God, we thank you for, for Drew and Jessica and their children, Ian and Kayla and Kirsten, Lord, the sacrifices they make as they go forth in faith, believing God, you've already gone before them and are opening doors to reach this part of the world. Lord, we think about suffering in the U.S., but there are other parts of the world that know so much more when it comes to suffering. God, we pray that you would use this family and that you would use us to use this family to be able to minister to the homeless, the hungry, the hurting, those who are, are yet not even know how to read, but you are providing for them opportunity to learn to read the scriptures for themselves. And you're providing Bibles and you're providing medicine. And you're providing food and shelter through this ministry to those in that area that have been so stricken. God, we thank you for your faithfulness. In Jesus' name. Amen. I think we could also mention that uh, Tom and Sherry Moore, who we, we supported until they came home, uh, are the parents of one of those. Yes, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. I, I, I have to go back and read my notes. Forgive me, as we get more connected, we'll know more for certain. I think that you may remember uh, Tom and Sherry Moore. They've been with us for many years. They visited, we supported them. Now, for the other day, retired, but I believe that she is the daughter of yeah. Tom and Sherry Moore. Yeah. And so, how exciting. And we didn't know that, just how things get connected and how God works that way. So, I love that. So, one other place I want us to pray for, uh, thinking about other parts of the world. So, let me read to you. Well, first of all, you're, we, we are called of God by the Word of God to pray for Israel. Mm -hmm. Yes. To pray for Israel. He said, in fact, the nations who pray for and bless Israel, I will bless. And I believe that's one of the reasons America is so blessed. Because we, you know that we are grafted in, if you will, we are an offshoot, if you will, through Jesus Christ. We are God's chosen people. We, the church, believers, just as Israel is his chosen people. And we are called to pray for them. So I trust you are praying for them. There's some terrible things happening again. Wars happening there again. Things are different. We would not have been able to believe even just a short time ago that they would be attacked and the world would do nothing. And that's what's happening right now. But you know, God is doing something. It boggles my mind to imagine this. 200 missiles coming in all at once and boom, 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 boom. They don't land. Now we would think about the great military power. But I'll tell you, God is mighty. And God is powerful. And God will. God will protect you. Let me tell you this. Mankind, no man on earth or any other being will ever utterly destroy Israel. It's not going to happen. Unless this incredible book be a lie and we know that it's not. But we are called to pray. Let me share some history uh, about Israel, if you will. And we're going to pray for Israel. So a little over 70 years ago, the Jews were taken to slaughter like sheep. Can you imagine? Just a little over 70 years ago, they were taken to slaughter like sheep. 60 years ago, they had no country, no army. Seven Arab countries declared war on a small Jewish state only a few hours after its creation in 1948. Seems like forever for some of you, but that's not very long ago. There at that time were 650,000 Jews against the many millions in the Arab world. There, there was no strong Israel defense forces at the time, no powerful air force to save us, they write, but only brave Jewish people with nowhere else to go. Lebanon, Syria, Iraq, Jordan, Egypt, Libya, Saudi Arabia, all attacked them at the same time. The country that the United Nations gave them was 65% desert. 65% desert. 
35 years ago, says we fought three most powerful armies in the Middle East and we swept them in six days. Read your history, the Six Day War. Boggles our minds, but listen, God is faithful to his own. It says we fought against various coalitions of Arab countries which had modern armies and many Soviet weapons and we have always beaten them. Today, we have a state, a country. Today, we have an army. Today, a powerful air force, a state-of-the-art economy with exports worth billions of dollars. Just, dear ones, just over 70 years, this people who were annihilated, said to never return, are now exporting billions of dollars of priceless things around the world. Intel, Microsoft, IBM, and many high-tech companies develop cutting-edge products in Israel. Their doctors receive awards for medical research. They make the desert bloom and sell oranges, flowers, and vegetables all over the world. But they're 65% deserts. Can, they, can we not see God's hand on Israel? Israel has sent its own satellites into space, three satellites even at the same time. It says, we are proud to be at the same rank as the United States, which has 250 million inhabitants, and Russia, which has 200 million inhabitants. In China, which now has 1.3 billion. Europeans, France, Great Britain, Germany, with over 350. The only countries in the world to send objects into space and say that we have done that in only 60 years because of God's sovereign protection. We are led, ashamed and hopeless to slaughter. We have experienced the smoking ruins of Europe. We have won our wars here in Israel with less than nothing. We build our little empire with nothing whose Hamas... Who is Hamas to scare us, to terrify us? We celebrate our Passovers, and we have survived the pharaohs, the Greeks, the Romans, from Spain, Russia, Hitler, Holocaust, you name it, and God has saved us. I'm reading this to you because we need to understand that when we stand with Israel, we stand with God. The church is called to stand and pray. It says, we survived Saddam, we will survive the enemy's presence. Let us remember all nations, empires, or cultures who once tried to destroy us no longer even exist today. Egypt, Babylon, the Greeks, Alexander, Macedonia, the Romans, you mentioned them. If they came against us, they no longer exist. Wow. I pray America would never be foolish enough to turn against Israel and to attempt to take her out. Because yeah. history says, uh, not a good thing. Yeah? So let us pray. That we, America, forever stand strong for what is true and what is right. And we defend the defenseless around the world. And we pray for and we support financially and prayerfully places around the world that have not been as blessed as we. Why is America blessed? Because she has been from the beginning of her birth one nation under God, serving and following after God. May we forever be such a nation. They go on to write, we know, we know that we stand only because of God, Jehovah, who watches over us. Now, many Israelis yet do not know Jesus, but they sovereignly serve God, and they will know the Messiah as the whole world will one day know. Yes, one day, dear ones, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Until that day, we have a job. We have a purpose. Isn't it good to know you all have a purpose? Say, I have a purpose. I have a purpose. We have a purpose, dear ones, to be a part of this most incredible journey of sharing Jesus Christ around the world. Let us pray. God, thank you for Israel. Thank you for these ministries that we get to partner with. Thank you, God, that you are still actively working. And wherever the name of Jesus is lifted up, our God reigns. And we give you praise and we give you glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please do not forget these ministries. If you need a card to remind you, pray for them, pray for them, pray for them. When you see under here the news, pray for Israel. Trust that God is working and that he's working through us, the church of Jesus Christ, to minister the gospel around the world. So thank you for remembering that. A quick little thing before we jump into what I want to share today. 
uh, coming soon. It says you're joining us this Monday. So that's tomorrow. I got the email yesterday. Maybe it came sooner, but I only saw it yesterday about a gathering of Christians to worship together in our community. A community-wide worship gathering tomorrow evening sponsored by a ministry called One Hope. It's all the churches in our area that network together for opportunity to spread the love of Jesus and the gospel in this area. So over here on Marcola Road, there's a Northwest Christian Church has purchased a large field. They're relocating from Harlow Road to this large piece of property on um, Harlow Road. Is that Harlow Road? Uh, uh, um, Northwood Christian, forgive me, on Marcola Road. So they're relocating to Marcola Road, and it's right between, the whole field is between 19th and 28th on Marcola Road. So it's a huge field. You can't miss it. If you go on to Marcola Road, you'll see this huge field. You'll see them set up there. So I want to invite you all to join me. I'm planning on being there Sunday night from 6.30 to 8 p.m. It says bring a chair, bring a lawn chair, bring a blanket because it's outdoors. The weather will be good. It's not going to be 81 like it will be today, perhaps, but it'll be in the mid-70s. So it'll be a warm summer afternoon from 6.30 to 8 p.m. Join me and others at Northwood Christian's New Phil on Marcola Road between 19th and 28th. And I have a couple of these flyers. I'll put one back there if you want to look at it again. Take a picture of it with your phone or however you want to do that. What but day is that? That is tomorrow, Monday, May 17th. So tomorrow evening, Monday, May 17th, from 6.30 to 8 p.m. It's the field right next to Albertson's Shopping Center. Yeah, you know where that Albertson Shopping Center is over here on Marcola Road, where it meets uh, they, they, Mohawk and Marcola slash 19th is right there at the intersection by the freeway. That Albertson's, Carl's Jr.'s there. And so come this way, just a little ways from that, there's a huge new field that, uh, praise God, Northwood Christian, which is located farther down on Harlow, is now relocated to that property and going to build a new facility there. So they're opening up the whole field to come and worship with them. So let us take an opportunity to do that, and this will be back there for us to join them, all right? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay. Let's make sure we still agree with this before we continue. Because if we don't, I'm going home. Yeah? I mean, that's the only reason I'm here. All Scripture. Where you say all? All. All Scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. All Scripture is breathed of God. Yes? What a beautiful promise that is. We put our hope and our trust in that. That the Word of God is our lifeline is our source, is our hope. We believe, dear ones, that the Bible is the inspired word of God and the only, only infallible guide and rule of our faith and practice. Amen? All right, so we all agree with that. Again, we believe the Bible is the inspired word of God and the only infallible guide and rule of our faith and practice. Some scriptures there for you to remember. There are some flyers on the table for you to take to heart. Because we've been journeying for several weeks about what it is that you believe and why do you believe it. If somebody comes to you, and I'm going to pick on this one later right up here, and says, what do you believe? How can you believe that? Well, because I look around and I see the universe and I believe in that. That's where it starts. Amen. Because, you know, that's where we're at right now, dear ones. People are searching for answers. Sometimes they're confrontational, I'm going to put you on this spot, but we need to know why we believe what we say we believe and be able to share why we believe it and why we believe that this, do you know that this is the only book ever written that has stood the test of time? Believe me, it has been picked apart, dissected, ridiculed, tried and tried and tried to be disproven, and has not been disproven. It has stood the test of time. There are atheist scholars who set out to disprove the Word of God. They dug, they dug, they searched, and they searched. You know what happened? They became born again Christians, a.k.a. C.S. Lewis. 
Joshua Gallup. Joshua Gallup. Tolkien. These were individuals who were well-educated men of God, men who sought out to disprove this book. And you know what happened? Now there's some of the greatest scholars of the Word of God. So let us journey a little bit. Because we are called to watch. Matthew 20. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of God is coming. Keep watch. That's what we should be doing, church. We've been talking a bit. I talked a couple weeks ago and I've spoken about heaven and hell. They're real. Yes, they are. Do we understand it all? No, but I believe this book. We just all agree. It's the infallible word of God. And it says there's a heaven and there's a hell. But the beautiful promise is that there's an alternative. Uh, because of the Jesus Christ, we can choose. How many like to be able to choose what you want? Come on, we're Americans. I want to be able to make my own choice. Wear a mask, not wear a mask. Whatever it might be, right? Yeah. Well, see, that's who the God is that we serve. Our God is not a dictator. He never, ever, in all of my life serving him now, 30 plus years, has he ever strong-armed me. You know what I mean? He's never strong-armed me. Yes, he's beckoned me. He's whispered to me. He's called. He's even put people in front of me, and he's written a lot for me to read. But he's never strong on me. So we get to choose. And he tells us that we should watch, therefore. We don't know neither the day nor the hour. But I wonder, could I really be living in that time when he may come and take us all unto himself, that time when every knee and every tongue Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. Could we be living in that time? I don't know. My grandfather, my great-grandfather, my great-grandfather was a Nazarene minister. And then my grandfather on my mother's side was a deacon. They all believed that Jesus was coming in their time. In fact, the apostles so believed that Jesus was coming again in their time that they gave their lives. So we are supposed to be living in such a way that we believe this is the time. This is the day. And therefore, if we're doing that, we won't become complacent and pew warmers. And, and, and for us, you know, it's not, but it grieves my heart sometimes to say, thank you for being here today. Do you know why I'm here today? Because I love God. And I want to honor Him. And he says, honor him by at least giving me a day. My, I know that you are all mindful of him throughout the week and you're giving your time in prayer and so forth. But this makes God smile. I pray this church be full again. There are more than enough people in the community just surrounding us to fill this church ten times over. We need to be praying, God, people out there are hurting. They are hungry. They are scared. They are tired. They are angry. They are everything but at peace. Because of God. So pray for them. Pray for them. Let us keep watch. We do not know the day nor the hour. Let us trust that God is coming again. Do you believe that? I believe in quote, the second coming of Christ. In fact, the word of God tells us that he will even set foot on this planet and the whole world will know. The whole world will know. God is watching church. He's watching you. He's watching me. He's watching the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Let's pray again. God, as we share your word now over the next few minutes, I pray it would come alive for us. That there would be such an anticipation and excitement within our spirit to realize, Lord, that you are coming again. And that we're living in the world now where we're, we might think and believe that we see hell on earth, but it's nothing like what you prepared. For Satan, yes, himself and those who follow him. And Lord, nothing like what you prepared in heaven for us to see, Lord God. Your word says, our eyes not seen, our ears not heard. We not even can begin to understand. God, thank you that you're coming again to receive us to ourselves. Anoint now this word as we share it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 He is, dear ones, coming again. He is coming, he is coming, he is coming. Paul said in 2 Timothy 4, 8, Finally, therefore, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all those who have loved 
His appearing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Think about that for a moment. Do you love the thought and the idea of His appearing? Yes. I mean, listen, because, listen, listen out there if you're home watching via video, not every Christian loves the idea and the thought of Jesus coming back again right now. Now it's kind of busy now. I know, and I started to believe. So, yeah, my son Caleb, he's in his 20s. He's got his whole life in it. Look at these incredible young people. Thank you guys for being here. I love you. God bless you. How's your arm doing? Good? You bumped your brother with it yet? Yes? Yeah, I knew you would. Sorry, Mom, Dad. Just, I love these. But you know what? you got your whole life ahead of you. And should God not come today, then, uh, well, even one day you might be married. You might have grandchildren for your parents or whatever. You can do great things. But there is nothing compared to being with God in heaven. So it's harder when you're younger. When you get older and things start changing, it's like, oh, come quickly, Jesus. Because believe it or not, I was young once too, and I'm still very young at heart. But we need to love. He says, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me. This is Paul writing to Timothy. He says, will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all. Say all. All. All who love the idea of his appearing. Not all Christians are anxious about him coming again, and that boggles my mind. Why? Well, you know. Uh, you know. I want to do this, and I want to do that, and I'd like to see this, and I'd like to have this grandbaby, and, that, and I too. That's okay, but nothing. Say nothing. nothing. Uh, I just want to make sure you're still with me. Nothing compares. We talked a couple weeks ago about the glory of heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah. It gets me excited about the promise. Believe me that the things that God has in store for you in the heavens is beyond anything you could ever think to enjoy here on earth. So love the idea of his appearing and his coming again. Hallelujah. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, the comfort of Christ's coming. Think about what has happened. He says, I pray that you're neither deceived nor ignorant. As Paul puts it, understand this. The stage is set. The second coming of Christ for his church can happen anytime. That's why the apostles believed it could happen in their lifetime. That's why my great-grandfather, the minister of the Nazarene church, believed that it could happen and that it was going to happen in his lifetime because they loved and they longed for the idea of his appearing. That was their focus. And I am concerned. I am concerned for the church of America that we have not longed for nor loved the idea of his appearing because we have been blessed, 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 blessed. We have been. As a nation, God has loved us and blessed us. And we've become pretty comfortable. So much so, well, you know, Lord, I really love the idea of you coming again, but, you know, could you wait? You know, could you, could you wait? Because, you know, I have a vacation planned, and my, my children are having children now, and we have to believe in our hearts that what God has prepared for us who love and long for His appearing is beyond anything we could imagine. When we really believe that, we just said we believe all Scripture is inspired of God. When we really believe that, there's nothing in this world that can compare to the hope of eternity with God in heaven. Okay? Just so we're all thinking the same way. John 14, I love this passage. We've read it before. We've gone through it a few times, but I love this passage. Let not your heart be troubled. Jesus writes to the church, You believe in God, he says, Believe also in me, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go now. Jesus says, I am going now to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. I mean, why go and prepare a place for you? He's not going to come again to receive you unto himself. He says that where I am, you may be also. This world, dear ones, has not seen the last of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's say it again. This world, this world has, not seen has not seen the last of Jesus Christ. The last of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's coming again. And the scripture says, yes, he's going to put his foot on this planet. 
and every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. Oh, what a glorious day that will be. If you are alive on planet Earth, when that happens, kaboom! What an explosion of excitement and life is going to take place. One teaches best what one needs to learn the most. And I need to get this deep in me, and you need to get in you, that nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing compares to the glory of Christ's return. Hallelujah. Scripture, you know, boasts of 129 prophecies regarding Jesus' first coming. We call it the Advent, right? His first Advent. We celebrate Christmas. His first coming. There are 129 prophecies regarding Jesus' first coming, but 329 predictions regarding His second coming. He's coming again. And you know what's pretty cool? If all of these were fulfilled, 129 times prophecies about His first coming, you think there's a pretty good chance that these others will be fulfilled too? Yeah, I think so. I think so. No, I believe so. I know so. According to the Word of God, that those predictions are coming. They are coming. Some of the stage is already being set. Some of the things are already being laid out for His coming. Now, it could happen today. It could happen tomorrow. I could lose all my hair before. No, I won't. Thank you, Jesus. He could come 100 years from now. Then I probably would have. But we need to trust and believe that he's coming again. When we lose the fire of his second coming, we lose the hope of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We become complacent pew warmers. And I, I said we become complacent pew warmers. Let me say that slowly. I don't want that to be said of anybody that has ever attended Lakeside Open Bottle Community Church. Let it be said of us that we hunger for, no, we long for, no, we love the idea of his appearing, his second coming. Hallelujah. Jesus is coming again. He said it. He said it. He says, I will come again. The angel said it. This same Jesus who was taken up from you to heaven will come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. Remember the story in Acts? He's being lifted up and the disciples are watching. And then they're watching and they're watching and he's being taken up and now he's gone and they're still watching. Can you imagine the scene? I imagine it as I read the scripture again after full. I imagine myself standing in the field, is that quirky or what? Looking up. And I do that sometimes. At night I'll go and I'll look up and see the stars all together. When the sun is rising, somebody's sister says you got to see the sunrise. I love that actually. I get to see the sunrise most mornings because I get to be an early bird. There's something majestic about the rising of the sun. It's quiet. It's calm, everything's fresh. So I go out and I look, and I think, I keep my eyes on the eastern horizon as the sun rises. The sun could be coming again today. When you start your day that way, it's pretty cool, actually. It kind of changes your perspective about what you're thinking about. It goes on to say, Paul writes in Acts chapter 1, Paul said, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven, First Thessalonians says, John said, Behold, he is coming with the clouds. Scripture after scripture, I don't have time to list them. Scripture after scripture, like I said, 329 predictions of his coming again, the word of God declares, which we have declared, church, we've declared to see infallible word of God. It says he's coming again. Hallelujah. That's exciting for me. It gives me hope. And it gives me a boldness. Paul put it this way in Romans chapter 1, verse 16. He says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know why I'm not ashamed? Because I believe this stuff. And I'm excited about him coming again. So when somebody's struggling out there, and I know they're struggling, I'm not ashamed to tell them, do you know why I have hope? Because my hope's in Jesus, and that this is not it. Even if you're blessed, 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 blessed. Say, I'm blessed. Come on, say it. I am blessed. I am blessed. And we are. No matter what state or place we are in. But until we learn to realize that even in our greatest blessedness, there's nothing compared to what God has for us. Today, as in the past, He does just as He says He will. Today, just as He did fulfill 129 prophecies regarding the first coming. He will do today as he did in the past and he will 
do as he says he will. You can count on that. It's better than gold in the ground, better than money in the bank, better than stocks in the market, better than health itself. He is coming again. Hallelujah. He is. I know he is. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. You've seen before. I love this. It's for, it is written, Your eye has not seen, eye has not seen, nor ear heard, nor has it even entered into your heart or the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. I've read that scripture to you a lot. It's one of my favorites because I can imagine a lot. I love the, the idea and the imagine of even when you think about the scriptures and it talks about heaven. We looked a couple weeks ago about heaven and the glorious wonder of gold's, streets of gold so pure it's like glass. Gates of pearls and diamonds and stones that you couldn't imagine. And the lion laying down with the lamb. What a glorious place that would be. Even with those imagination, with those thoughts given to us in Scripture, this says there's more. There's more. Everybody say there's more. There's more. Isn't that pretty cool? There's more than you can even imagine. And I can imagine a lot. If we, as church, do not long for his appearing, then we are no better than the church of Laodicea. Read about it. Read about the church of Laodicea. These scriptures will be on the website later. You can look at them, but read about it. The church was lukewarm. They were neither hot nor cold. They did not long for and love the idea of his appearing. I don't want that to be said of me ever, ever again. There's been seasons in my life I will confess. And I thought, well, not today, Mark. My son's getting married today. Not today, our first grandbaby's from Whatever it might be. I remember when our when we were younger and our children were first born and those things. But understand that which God has prepared. I'm thinking about fishing. I love fishing. Maybe they'll be fishing in heaven. If there is, we'll catch the biggest one ever. I don't know what's going to be. Probably won't eat them. I don't know. I don't know. But I know it's going to be better. But I don't want to be this church. Lakeside, we need to forever long for, and, and not just say it, but believe it. Not just say I know, but do what we say we know. That we know we continue to be a church that's growing and ministering like we are spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world. Let us say, as John said with his last words of the book of Revelation, even so, come. Lord Jesus, even so, come. Is that your prayer? Do you think of that in the morning when you awaken? When you see the sunrise? Do you think about that in noontime? When you're angry and tired? Past lunch? Do you think about it at nighttime? When you're tired or weary and ready for bed? Do you think about the idea that he's coming again? And that can excite you, that can encourage you. Share that hope with your loved ones, your friends, your family. Continue to pray that they too would come to know that same longing for the loving and the idea of the second coming, because he's coming. And if there is, and there is, a heaven and a hell, I want to be ready for heaven. And I want all whom I know to be ready for heaven. And we know the answer. What's his name? Jesus. 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 Pastor Phil, could we sing the, the Revelation song in closing? It's just a few minutes yet before noon, believe it or not. But I'd like to close with this song. And I'd like you to just think about yourself, your life, your place, your family. Maybe there's family you want to be praying for in this Lord. I would pray that my family, my sons and my daughters, my grandchildren, my neighbors, my friends, my co-workers, everybody I know, would come to that place in their life where they long for, where they have a love for the idea and the thought of the second coming of Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Pastor Phil